What's up, digital architects? I'm Chris Scaminacci, Vice President of Engineering at Tech Pulse Professional Services and the Frank Lloyd Wright of Resource Booking, also known as Siege the MSP Automator of MSPAutomator.com. Time to build some scheduling masterpieces. The first thing we want to talk about today is exchange calendars. And maybe this is a little bit applicable to the way that Google works as well. I'm not exactly sure. I don't use Google Workspace myself. Maybe you can let me know in the comments. But the idea is with exchange calendars, you have several options of how to link those to Halo PSA. A lot of people will use the each technician connects to their exchange account individually. I'm not a huge fan of that because that makes the agent the owner of an appointment uh, that a, an end user might book or that you might add to Halo yourselves. Uh, I'm a big fan of the connect to a single account, which has delegate access to each agent's calendar. And the reason that I like to use this option instead is because then it makes the support mailbox the owner of that appointment. So if you were to set up your app registration like this and connect, you would then have the support mailbox be the owner of the calendar options that happen inside of Halo, right? Um, and what's really great about that is, you know, if your agent has a, an appointment booked for tomorrow and they call out sick, the support mailbox still owns that appointment. It's very easy for you to just reassign that appointment to another agent. Uh, whereas if the agent owns the appointment, it might be confusing to the end user and they might not really know, um, you know, if that person's out, why somebody else might be calling them. Um, and it can kind of just create some confusion, right? So really, this is a very powerful way for you to maintain control of appointments and still give flexibility to your end users and to your agents. Now, that being said, I actually do not advocate for having your agents give the support mailbox true delegate to their calendar. And the reason for that is twofold. One, it'll give the support mailbox the ability to read their private appointments, regardless of the private status that inside of Outlook or whatever. But also it'll send an email to the support mailbox every time they schedule an appointment outside of Halo. And that kind of just creates needless noise. But what you can do instead is have the agents right click on their calendar in Outlook or OWA and give the support mailbox or whatever mailbox you authorize this app registration with edit access on their calendar and do not allow the viewing of private appointments. So they'll just see that there's a private appointment there and it'll import the private appointment to block that time in Halo, but it won't actually let them see the details of private appointments across agents. Additionally, just giving them edit is enough because the support mailbox only needs to create and edit appointments for an agent. It doesn't need to be truly a delegate. And this is somewhere that the documentation can maybe stray, and maybe that's why people don't adopt this methodology because they, they find out it acts that same way. Set up correctly, the connect to a single account which has delegate access to each agent's calendar is by far a better option to keep Halo Connect because they don't need to link their calendars individually. All you need to do is have your agents go into Outlook or OWA and right click on their calendar and share it with whatever mailbox you authorize this app registration with and give them edit access. Now, there is one setting here that's very important and that's use UTC time zones for creating appointments. And the reason you want to do that is because if your clients or your agents span time zones, you will have an offset in the appointment time based on what the Halo default uh, time zone is set to in the advanced settings. So by using UTC time zone for creating appointments, it won't actually change the way they're visually displayed to anybody at all. Nobody will notice anything different, but Halo uses that UTC as an anchor to understand the spread between time zones and ensure that the appointments always line up correctly. Some other options you have here are make every imported appointment private, and that'll import anything not created in Halo, i.e. anything coming from their exchange calendar directly private inside of Halo. Typically, you don't want to do this because agents might set up meetings or you know some kind of appointment outside of the Halo interface itself, and you want to still capture the details of that in most cases. Now, without that make every appointment private uh, unchecked, you will also inadvertently probably bring in some private appointments. And the solution to that is to mark the appointment private in OWA or in Outlook on the calendar itself. And because we only gave edit access to the support mailbox and the inability for it to see through those private details, that'll work exactly as intended. Private appointments marked in Outlook will come into Halo as private and everything else will come in normally. Now, if you've configured this correctly and you've linked your app registration successfully, you'll actually see some options change. You'll get syncing appointments to Exchange and the import appointments from Exchange options here. Now, sometimes you'll just want to hit that enable for all agents and then test calendar access, and you'll know which ones have shared and have not shared their calendars. 
right? You'll also get the ability to import appointments and recurring appointments, and you'll be able to turn on the Halo integrator for those things to run automatically. Typically, I don't recommend that you enable it for all agents unless you really want everybody inside of Halo's calendars to be constantly imported. Now, if you do hit that enable all agents button on accident, it's very easy to turn it back off. If you come into the individual agent records themselves, you can say create appointments from calendar integrations, never or always. Those are your two options. And if you want to exclude an agent from a resource booking calendar, which we'll talk about in a second, the option for that is here as well. So you can actually just import their calendar, but not allow them to be bookable. So that's good for your service desk managers or your higher level staff. Now let's talk about some things that you might need to set up settings wise under the calendars and appointments module inside of Halo to get the behavior exactly what you want it to be. So under calendars and appointments and general settings, our top two things are very important. Appointments release tickets from SLA hold means if that ticket is on SLA hold because you are waiting for the, you know, the end user to respond and either you create an appointment or they create an appointment using resource booking, that ticket's going to come off SLA hold and your SLA is going to continue to tick. Typically, that's not behavior that you want. Your calendar time slot size is how big the slots are in the calendar that are available for appointment and resource booking. Typically, you want this between 30 and 60 minutes. Now, allow sending of appointment invite emails is something you typically want to turn on, but that invites are only a compatible with the EWS method, which we're not using. Remember, we're using the single app registration that has you know, delegate access to each engine's calendar. So really, we're going to use send emails. Next, complete appointments, tasks, and to-do items when the ticket is closed. Usually you want to either always complete these or ask each time or you set them to manually complete, right? That means that when the ticket is closed, any associated appointments attached to that ticket are either going to need to be completed manually or they're going to automatically close. Hiding appointment actions from end users is typically not advisable. That means that if you create an appointment that they're not going to know about it. You can color your project calendar entries based on a status color which means basically taking your project appointments and making them a different color on the calendar so that they're easily discernible. Showing the date done on the appointment and task completion screen, this allows you to actually complete an appointment retroactively. Typically, the behavior with the appointment is that when you complete the appointment, it assumes you're doing it at that moment. So you will typically want to turn the date done on appointment task completion screen on so that your agents can actually go back in time and complete appointments in case they forget. You can default the appointment completion date and time to the appointment end time. So if you are completing an appointment, you can just autofill that box with the appointment end time rather than actually giving Halo the start and end time of your appointment. Allow changing the ticket ID that an appointment is already related to if set is very important too. And you know this could be uh, either we created it on the wrong appointment ticket or we've, you know, we need to move it to a different ticket. A lot of this can come into play in the projects module too. Typically, you want to allow changing the ticket ID that an appointment is related to. When creating an appointment on a ticket, if the ticket is unassigned, assign it to the agent of the appointment. This is specifically an internal behavior thing. So if you're, you have a ticket sitting in you know, triage or unassigned, and that agent goes in there and creates an appointment on that ticket, it's going to automatically assign that ticket to the agent also. I leave this off. Um, you should probably leave this off if you've got dispatchers that are doing appointment setting uh, or scheduling of tickets on your agent's behalf, because you don't want the dispatcher to typically get the appointment assigned to them. You can do a default appointment body if you'd like. So this is what the notification appointment body looks like, or you can do an appointment notification for the agent or a task notification for the agent. And these are all customizable also. Your appointment scheduler should only show qualified agents by possible, you know, by uh, by default. So if you are using something like qualification based routing or qualification matching, it's not going to show agents that are not qualified to take that appointment. You can also show the location and the status field of that appointment. So if these appointments are on site and you need to show a location field, that's very useful. Or if you want to show the status of what an appointment looks like, also very useful. Before we set up resource booking, we usually want to come in here and look at what our appointment types look like. So your appointment types are things that are selectable in that new appointment drop down for what kind of appointment it is. But there's also some additional functionality built in here. So you can do things like, say, override the calendar color for that specific type of appointment, or you can create a Microsoft Teams meeting for appointments with this type if you have Teams linked. I typically use the virtual meeting option and create a Microsoft Teams meeting for appointments with this type, because then when you create the appointment, it's going to send that user a nice link to uh, you know, be able to join the, the, the Teams meeting at that time. If you're not an organization that uses Teams, you might want to leave that off. but. The basic idea here is your appointment types are going to directly translate into the types of things that your 
end users or your agents can book against their own calendar. Now let's talk about resource booking. So resource booking is basically Calendly-like functionality, but inside of Halo, right? So you can do things like turn on the uh, appointment booking. And if you add the dollar sign appointment booking to an email template or to like say can text uh, from a ticket, the booking will be, uh, the booking link will be given to the end user when they receive that message. Um, I typically require that users be logged in to create a booking because we don't want to just send out random booking links that people can use to book against our calendar. And then we can give them the types of things that they can book through resource booking. So if we want to do something like, I don't know, uh, remote support. And we want to say that booking duration is 30 minutes. And maybe we want to give our agents 15 minutes before and 15 minutes after. And then we can pick what kind of appointment it is, those things that we set up in our appointment types. Of course, so we can say virtual meeting and, you know, give them a message to show that says, hey, thanks. We booked it. Now, this is the global setting that's turned on, but we still have to turn it on for each ticket type. But there's a couple of other things we want to do before we do that. First, we want to set our minimum hours in advance to allow booking. I don't recommend setting this very low. I would say at least four to eight hours. Um, and this is working hours, by the way. So if it's set to four or eight hours, they're not going to be able to come in at noon and then book somebody uh, at, you know, any earlier than 4 p.m. If it's set to eight hours, it's not going to be until the next day, typically. Um, the reason you want to do it this way is you don't want somebody to come in and book a, an appointment on a ticket. And then you know, one hour later, that agent's actually scheduled to be at lunch or on site or whatever, and they're going to miss the appointment. And that's going to have some you know, angry people. The maximum days in advance to allow booking, I usually set this lower, something like 14 or 30. Um, that's really a personal preference thing. The show phone number field when booking, I always make this mandatory and I make the email address mandatory too. What that means is that if that person doesn't already have a phone number or email address inside of Halo on their user record, then we're going to force them to fill it out because in the off chance that they don't show up to our Teams meeting or however else, we need to know where to contact them or how to contact them uh, for that meeting. Now let's look at what the ticket type com uh, configuration looks like for this. So on your actual ticket types, which is configuration, tickets, ticket types, and then an actual ticket type chosen, we can go in here and say, OK, we're going to use a certain resource type, and that's going to be you know, an agent or a team. And we want to allow users to book appointments from tickets. So we can say the default agent booking resource type is select from allowed teams or teams assigned to the ticket. I would say usually team assigned to the ticket. And the choose agent booking type and duration, we're going to say, oh, maybe we only want to give them the ability to book remote support session. Now, if you did set this setting to select from allowed teams, you could then add your allowed teams down here and save that option. Now we just need to do something to deliver that booking link to somebody so that they can actually use it and set up an appointment. Now, my favorite way to actually use resource booking is not necessarily to just leave it up to the user to go into the portal and book something themselves. I prefer to do it in a canned text. And where this becomes very useful is if you're trying to chase people down that don't answer you or, you know, that may be out of the office or they're just very hard to get a, get a hold of and you want to schedule an appointment with them so that you can actually resolve their, their issue, right? Um, so we use this as a canned text and we put a link in here that says, click here to book your support appointment. You know, thanks for, you know, whatever. But in the URL, we're using that exact variable that says dollar sign appointment booking. And when we save this, we can go to a ticket in Halo and actually use this canned text to respond to a user, right? So I could come in here and say, oh, you know, Emma Baker, I'm going to email this user and I'm going to give her my schedule appointment, right? So now we've got a click here to book support appointment. Just for giggles, I'm going to turn off the email here for demonstration purposes. But once I save this, Emma can now click this link and she can come into Halo and see my calendar and my availability. Same way kind of Calendly works, right? So now she can pick all of these days on my calendar of when I might be available. Very easy. You can see that the email address, the phone number is mandatory. And if there's any notes she wants to do, great. So she can, let's say, pick this. We can use test. And save. And now we can see that that appointment has been added. So here's all my information that I need from the user to meet with them. 
and it has now gone on to my schedule and I have a new appointment notification about this user. It will also show up here with our next appointment and that's that. Now keep in mind that resource booking goes off of the agent's work days. So the agent who is assigned to the ticket based on their work days. So if they're working in a different time zone or whatever, you might need to take that into account. However, this functionality baseline works very well. If you have any other questions or comments, please let us know in the comments and thanks for watching.